with a brand new motherfucking video for Real Housewives of Atlanta. Trying to do, you know, let's see, episode five, I think it is, or whatever. I don't remember what episode this is, but whatever. The newest episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Your girl's back with a new do. <laughs> Boo boo, okay. And if you guys are just now checking it out and just now seeing the blue and purple her, blurple her that I done had in my head with my little faux shaved side, and you want to know more information about that, I will link the video down below for whatever you want to find out with regard to what I did to this hair. I show you everything in the, with the hair and how I did it and uh, all the other shit. So check it out down below, just FYI, because some of y'all might be a little shocked because of my appearance right at this very moment. Okay, so hope everyone's having a great week and uh, let go. So we start off with Phaedra and Apollo, right? Now Phaedra's going to some, you know, Morticia Rara school shit, some study group or whatever in Alabama with her assistant slash friend slash nanny slash whoever the fuck she hired to look the part on this damn show, okay? So she's heading out to uh, Alabama and Apollo tries to come up to her to say, you know, bye, he's not going with her, she's gonna take the road trip. And so he comes over to try to say bye and she's like, I ain't fucking with you right Right now I ain't speaking to your ass and I'm not gonna lie as much as I cannot stand Phaedra's ass and her fake ass shit okay the stupid shit she tries to put on for you know the television trying to make her life sound so ridiculously perfect that she got everything going on I am team Phaedra with this shit she shouldn't be fucking with him riding or walking at this point because on some real shit Kenya and Apollo are hiding something we know some went down whether it was you know something physical or whatever the fuck maybe they had started to or thought about it never did it but there was still some some evidence or whatever the fuck but something went down between the two of them so I'm straight up team Phaedra on this shit just on this particular situation so Apollo decides to take that shit over to Peter because he didn't go with, with her to Alabama okay now here's the thing Peter is a funny motherfucker look if I was a dude Peter would be my boy and I'm a man's girl for the most part so I think Peter and I would get along the only thing is that when he walked out that motherfucker and he's talking to him outside and he's talking cars with this nigga and he's talking about yeah you know I'm gonna get me a this that in the car race car whatever the fuck he was talking about I'm like nigga you need to uh chill the fuck out because I know your little restaurant situation may not be working simmer down you buying uh, buildings and shit not letting Cynthia know whatever the fuck but you know I digress so they're sitting there having conversations and this is why I fucks with Peter a little bit no matter what the fuck this Negro does okay some shit I'm like ugh but for the most part he'll keep it funky with you and when Apollo came to him was like look had a heated conversation with Phaedra it didn't go down real well I told her she needs to chill the fuck out and Peter's like okay whoa 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 on some real shit that's not what the fuck you were supposed to say as a man and as her husband your ass should have told her whatever the fuck not whatever the fuck she wanted to hear but at the end of the day instead of trying to put that shit on her your ass should have been like look you are the only woman for me I ain't fucking with nobody else and he made a very relevant and good point to this particular particular scenario because you know Kenya and Phaedra's asses don't like each other they've never liked each other but all of a sudden Kenya's trying to be all up on Apollo's ass now Apollo's fine as fuck the motherfucker can't talk for shit and may not have a very um expanded vocabulary but we know that Kenya can't stand Phaedra and whatever's gonna get up under Phaedra's skin is exactly what Kenya's gonna try to do, right? And that's what Peter said. She was like, look, at the end of the day, you know damn well Kenya was playing games, trying to, you know, ex you know, obviously embarrass Phaedra. So you know, if your wife don't like the bitch, you should like the bitch. If she don't fuck with the bitch, you don't fuck with the bitch. And now that doesn't apply in every situation in regards to, you know, marriages or whatever, but when it comes to this type of shit, when you don't cross over lines and boundaries and shit, it. motherfucker I, you don't say hi to the bitch like at this point y'all are at a point where you shouldn't even say what's up to the bitch when y'all see each other in public that's how I feel but Peter kept it funky he was like look at the end of the day y'all are married if that's your woman then that's who you ride with and that's who you're you know you're loyal to so you shouldn't be fucking with Kenya we go on to Candy y'all know I am really really interested to see whatever the fuck shit's supposed to happen in this episode y'all know I recap the episode as I watch it so I don't know what the fuck's going on later on in this episode so you'll be able to see as we progress through this recap. Now we go to Candy who, you know, he's getting ready. She's getting ready for Todd to come over, you know, to the house because he was out of town and shit. She's with her friend Carmen, I believe is her name. And this is her best friend that she's been best friends with forever. Now, I don't remember seeing this bitch not nam time before this, so she might just be new this particular, you know, episode. I think she is. But either way, Candy's mama done said that, uh, you know, Todd is fucking with, you know, one of Candy's friends. Now, what I didn't realize is that who she was referring to until I saw this conversation between Candy 
Brandy and, and, and Carmen was that she was talking about Carmen. They're talking and Carmen's like, well, have you guys settled everything? Or, you know, how is the relationship between you and your mama? Like, what's going on with that? And, you know, Candy's explaining to her that it's not going anywhere. Like, I don't know what the hell to do. Carmen, you could tell that obviously Carmen, even though she, and it's obvious that she's been in their lives for a while, but, you know, she's like, look, motherfucker, like, if your mama's not on board, then even though I love her and I've known her for a while, you know, you gotta let her know to keep it pushing. Now, here's the thing about that shit. Understand that you know there's a lot of mixed opinions about how you know Candy's mom is acting and how she's acting kind of selfish right now. And a lot of people are thinking that the reason why she's giving Todd so much damn grief is because she don't want her money train to stop. Personally, I don't think that's gonna stop. I, I, no matter whether she dates or messes with Todd or whatever the fuck or marries that motherfucker, like and I, from what I understand, they are now married. But here in this season, this episode, they not okay. I doubt, highly doubt, based on just how Candy comes across, that she would cut her mama off just because she's married to Todd. At the end of the day, it is her money. Now, that being said, I wouldn't just kick my mama to the curb because that is still my mama. There's a level of respect that you got to have for your mama. And I mean, even though, you know, I don't necessarily agree with everything that is, her mama's doing with this whole Todd situation because it sounds like it's just a whole big clusterfuck of bullshit that she's coming up with to try to rile some shit up between the two of them or at least make it more than it is. It's just, it seems that it's just her that don't like that motherfucker. And you know, it seems like she's planting seeds everywhere to make sure that it's a miserable situation for Candy, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, that's still her mama. So okay I, I can't really fuck with the whole Carmen situation now keep in mind again Carmen is the motherfucker that's supposed to be messing with Todd so I don't know we don't know what's really going on and why she's saying that shit about her mama so we gonna see that in a minute Kenya's got a new place right and Miss Lawrence is trying to help her move into her new place okay suppose this place is you know 15 minutes away from Buckhead they walk in that motherfucker Miss Lawrence is like oh it's so beautiful it's so beautiful and of course Kenya's dumb ass is like now you no, this house is not nearly big enough for me. <laughs> Bitch, bye. If you don't go on with your delusional ass. So basically, that's just that damn scenario. She done called Nene, talked to Nene on the phone, told her ass she done moved into a place. Old girl talking about she got a handyman. I sent me the number. Can he clean pipes? And uh, they had a little laughy poo and kept it moving. So now we move on to uh, Nene and Cynthia. And Nene and Cynthia are at the grocery store. Another, you know, meaningless little you know, bullshit ass, you know, scene that they just threw in there to make the, you know, full hour or whatever. They're in the grocery store and Cynthia's talking about her daughter who's 13 years old, who got a boyfriend, which I totally don't agree with at all, okay? At all. And I ain't got no damn kids. But 13 is ridiculously young and Nene was making sure to let her ass know that that is exactly how she felt about that shit too. But outside of that, that was really what happened at that damn scene. Candy's got her whole situation going, you know, with the dinner and everything. Chef David's going in on the ones and twos in the kitchen, getting a nice little meal prepared for Todd and Todd comes home they have a little conversation and you know they're making a little small talk about how she hopes that you know he stays back and doesn't go out of town no more and shit they get down to sitting down to eat and everything and she just decides to go right into the whole conversation that she had with her mama whatever the fuck's going on with that shit so Candy and Todd are you know seemingly having a nice conversation as they're you know breaking bread having a little wine with a little beef tips or whatever they were eating or whatever Candy starts going right into the fact that her mama wasn't feeling tired and was talking shit on the motherfucker while he was gone and in that same breath was like yeah you know mama ain't really feeling you dog can you pass the wine you want some seasoning on your meat i mean todd's like what the fuck and where the fuck did that come from like drop this fork stop eating stop drinking whatever the fuck and it's like dude like this shit has got to stop i'm not gonna get disrespected this is some bullshit like we got to get this whole situation settled and for real for real like the more that i've been watching the season i i I, 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 I was on, on mama's side for a minute because I really wasn't feeling tired last season. And not that I disliked the motherfucker. I just didn't like the whole fact that he wouldn't sign a prenup. You didn't come in this motherfucker with the same money she got. And if it's just true love and there's nothing else to it, I don't see why that's an issue. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, there really wasn't much else more to him that I wasn't a big fan of. But just the more and more that I'm watching this season, like her mom is just going in on this motherfucker. And I have yet to see anything that Todd has done or heard anything that Todd has done even in the streets by now that shit would have come out on the blogs and shit unless I haven't heard about the shit yet that she should be that mad at him for if that makes sense so I'm so so much leaning more towards you know Todd's side on this one and even when he was sitting here talking to Candy at this point I'm sitting here like dude I feel you dog because he's sitting here like ain't gonna be ain't, no, ain't gonna be no more disrespect like I'm sitting here I'm out of town I'm working with people I'm you know I'm, I'm declining jobs for you you know I'm declining jobs to try to make sure I'm here for you and 
after a while in this industry, in this business, they're not gonna keep calling me if I keep saying no to projects and jobs. He's right about that shit in production and television and that type of thing. You can't keep saying no to opportunities because they'll go to the next motherfucker. There's always someone ready to eat and hungry out there. You know what I'm saying? So he's sitting there talking about how, you know, he feels disrespected and he doesn't feel like it's fair, like he's done whatever he can to show that he's ride or die. In the same breath, whatever she, whatever he's spitting out, here goes Candy and she all laughing, you know, kind of chuckling and laughing at the shit. You know, and obviously she's not laughing at the shit, but she's obviously that uncomfortable laugh. And he's sitting here like, dude, you laughing awfully hard about this shit on a regular basis. Like, this shit ain't funny no more. I'm sitting here, I'm the brunt of all the bullshit going on with your mama, and you sitting here chuckling, hee hee ha ha and shit. He was like, look, we gonna squash and settle this shit right now. At the end of the day, I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of the back talk and the behind back type shit. We need to sit down and have a conversation with your mama so that we can go ahead and hash things out. So, she goes ahead and calls. He's like, look, you can use my motherfucking phone here. Look, take my shit. She grabs his shit and calls her mama. And her mama actually said yes. And you all saw the wind. He said, hey, you know, how you doing? Or whatever he said. And she was like, mm. Or whatever the fuck. I was like, oh, hell no. Nah. This motherfucker right here. She clowning. So anyway, she says she's going to go ahead and meet up with him. So we're going to see what happens with that. Portia's finna move out, you know, supposedly. But she don't seem like she really wants to. She's a little comfortable at mama's house. And mama's comfortable with her being there too. Babying her and shit. And her sister's like, look, your motherfucking ass needs to move out the house and move on with your life or whatever. So they're getting ready to go and see the realtor. So we're going to find out th about that here in a little bit. Phaedra's in Alabama in her study group or whatever. And, you know, on some real shit, this scene is just, it's, it's stupid as fuck. But what it does point out is the fact that... Phaedra is a nut. This bitch is something's mentally fucking wrong with the bitch. Now, not, when she was talking about going to mortuary school or, you know, that type of shit, you know, at the end of the day, you know, more power to you. I wouldn't do the shit, but you got to make a living. It's good. At the end of the day, you trying to expand your shit, expand whatever you going on, the businesses that you have and all that kind of shit. It's cool. But the way she talks about that shit and the way she talks about... I don't even like to say it the way she says it. You know, talks about dead people. I'm using her words because I don't even... I feel like she disrespects like completely disrespects the whole business of more you know the morticians or mortuary business or whatever I just feel like the way she talks about the shit I get it you know it's a business that you can make money and that kind of thing but remember that people lost somebody this is a, a personal thing and the way she's talking about it I'm just like bitch if you don't shut the fuck up this next scene had me fucked up I'm not even gonna lie to y'all y'all gonna have to let me know about this shit down below y'all know I ain't got no damn kids but now we move on to the scene where Cynthia and Peter and their daughter Noelle their 13 year old daughter Noelle okay is having some company over and that company is Noelle's little boyfriend his name is Arthur or whatever and he's 13 years old too and he done come over with his mama too now what i'm trying to figure out and y'all know i already said i'm not a fan at all of this little young ass child okay 13 years old having a boyfriend and i know that's the kind of shit that people do when they're coming up you know they may have a guy that they have a crush on or someone that they like that they hang out with a little boy at school that you know they crushing on or whatever the fucking maybe they might call each other boyfriend but my thing is why in the world would you think to have them over and then for this Letitia. I guess that's Arthur's mama and Arthur to come to the house to have dinner or whatever. But I feel like her doing that is a little bit of encouraging. More encouraging than she really needs at this point. I personally feel like at the end of the day, them motherfuckers need to be encouraged to be friends. Them two motherfuckers still got Similac on their damn breath. Talking about their boyfriend and girlfriend and they having conversations and having dinners with as like with the parents sitting at the table like they on some grown up like real type shit. Arthur done came in and he done said it was up to everybody called peter peter he was like hi peter and i was like oh hell i mean before peter even reacted i was like hell nah and i mean if i was letitia letitia whatever the fuck her name is i'd have corrected that motherfucker from the jump like no you don't ever call the the man of the house by his first name shit you don't call your dad uh jonathan or whatever the fuck you gonna call him mr thomas or whatever the fuck his last name is so from the jump i was like this whole thing is fucked up how you gonna break bread like they're in a real relationship you ain't supposed to be encouraging that shit at least i don't think so not at that age they don't know nothing about not a damn about being in no kind of relationship 13 to me is hella young i know when i was 13 my black ass weren't thinking about no damn boys now maybe that's just me and even the boys that i thought were kind of cute i wasn't I, yeah, I wasn't going to my mom and dad talking about i got a boyfriend and shit if 
If I had, y'all know my parents are Haitian, them motherfuckers would have been like, oh, no, no, no. get the fuck out my room. You tripping. We ain't, we don't do none of that up and through here. You way too young. I get it. Meet the boy and all that kind of shit to get to kind of get to know who it is that she's referring to. I get that. Maybe if you went to pick up your daughter, maybe say hi to him in the, you know, parking lot or whatever. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm, I'm Noelle's mama. Know that I know what you look like, motherfucker. So if anything happens, I'm gonna come and fuck you up. I'd have done that shit. I understand that. But to break bread with the mom and to sit down at the table and act as if you guys are in a, like, that's almost like if I was, you know, about to marry somebody and I'm, you know, introducing them to my family, you know, for the first time. You know what I'm saying? I just wasn't a fan of that shit at all. Or she want to look at the place that she was going to possibly rent or whatever. Her sister's encouraging her, you know, to take a look at it. Think about Pharrell moving out because it's about time for her to move the fuck on. Mama's all sad sitting in the corner looking out the window all yearningly and shit because she don't want her da her daughter to move out the house. Or she's ass is like, I'm not ready to move. I don't really want to go nowhere. Mama's making pancakes for me and shit. And you know, the whole thing that's just hilarious to me is like, at the end of the day, like I totally understand, I can, I get it. You know, she mean, she's not ready to be, she's not ready to completely say, you know, I'm ready to close the door on this shit. Yeah, the divorce is happening and it is what it is. And, and you know, that's hard. That's gotta be hard emotionally, but my black ass is still thinking like, bitch, your ass is grown. At the end of the day, this is the type of shit the grown motherfuckers do. You don't sit up with mama and have mama be making pancakes for you. Now, maybe at first that's what happens when you, you know, you're trying to go back home and kind of get settled after you done you know had a divorce or whatever but at some point I feel like okay you gonna have to put your big girl draws on and get the fuck out of mama's house now I don't know how soon after that whole situation you know happened that they done took her to the apartment to start looking but I just feel like she a little too grown to be acting like some, some young ass kid that needs to be taken care of by her mama I'm just I'm just saying I don't know let me know what y'all think about that too all right so the part that we've been waiting for right candy Todd her mama they get together, time for din din, they finna have a, a powwow and try to figure out what the fuck's going on and I ain't gonna lie to y'all on some real shit. A lot of y'all would let me know a little bit about how y'all felt about, you know, Candy's mama. Especially after this scene, y'all, I can't even front. I might be kinda sorta team tied on this shit because her mama is never, not never, not never, not never gonna let this motherfucker find no kind of love in her life. I'm convinced at this point, just based on the conversation that they done had at the damn dinner table, that her mama, literally, her goal is to keep her ass single so that she can have candy for herself. This motherfucker's in here talking about, you ain't got no pictures of me on the walls and shit? Motherfucker, this ain't your damn house. I get that you might feel like she kind of pushed you aside or maybe doesn't pay as much time and attention with you or whatever, or attention to you or whatever because she's found love, but at the end of the day, like, how long are you gonna do this shit? Like, at some point in time, should you not be happy for candy's happiness should you not be you know rooting for candy's happiness and just based on what i saw i mean todd really could have said way more than the motherfucker said and he kept it respectful he just kept his tone down he didn't even get riled up no matter what the fuck she said that motherfucker was on him like white on motherfucking rice and he didn't even flinch and basically was just trying to level with her like look you know, I do provide. I provide love. I provide support. She's sitting here talking about motherfucking rings and shit. Talking about how, you know, the ring he done got was thrifty and, you know, you just thrifty and shit like that. I'm sitting here like, bitch, did you not know your daughter was thrifty? Everybody. I mean, shit, I don't know the bitch. And I know the bitch is thrifty. I was floored at this conversation. This motherfucker was like, I'm looking at you. I'm, I, you, you and me. This motherfucker was gangster with her shit. What got me about this whole situation that I thought was really fucked up was Candy's ass kept getting up from the motherfucking table. And when she was at the table, she barely had shit to say. And the point of this sit down was for them all three to talk about some shit. I mean, I know Todd had some shit on his mind. He wanted to hear what the fuck her mama had to say, but I feel like she was all up in Todd's ass. And in Todd's defense, considering that they're both finna get married, Candy could have said a few more things. I mean, yeah, I get it. She don't want to disrespect her mama, but at the end of the day, you done left this motherfucker on his own with your mama, and she's all making all kinds of shit, you know, all up in his ass talking about ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no river deep enough, ain't no desert dry enough to keep me off your ass, boy. Then Candy gonna walk in and be like, what 
what you over here reciting lyrics to a song for? The whole point of this whole sit down was to fucking hash things out between the three of them. I mean, yeah, the issue is with Todd and the mama, but at the end of the day, you know, Candy, I mean, I, I, whose side were the fuck you on? I mean, at, Todd at least deserved a little bit of a backup considering the fact that he's sitting there defending himself. And if you trying to marry this motherfucker, you really, I mean, if you ride or die for him, like, you need to have a little bit of his back. I just felt like she just kind of kept walking in and out and was like, fuck it, let these motherfuckers do what they do because, you know, I don't want to get involved. And I was like, that's, that. I don't really agree with that shit. But either way, we gonna see some more shit because we gonna see what happens. And of course, y'all saw the, the previews of the upcoming episodes gonna be some cray cray shit because her mama's gonna go cray cray on Carmen. So we gonna get to the bottom of that shit too. So, y'all already know what to do. You know next week we gonna go ahead and recap Real Housewives of Atlanta yet again. Y'all know Love and Hip Hop is coming as well, so be on the lookout for that. If you wanna know about this hair right here, make sure you check out the link down below or the annotation that I'll put somewhere on this video. And y'all know, hit me up on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash searchlight sandy. Hit me up on my Facebook fan page or Pinterest page. Those links are down below. Hit me up on my blog, thesocialite.blogspot.com and Instagram at socialitesandy. And you already know I love y'all. And I will see y'all in the next video. Love y'all. Bye. Purple. Couldn't decide which one to do. And so your girl decided to go ahead and uh, do both. So this is blurple hair. It's primarily...